Hello and welcome to this video presentation on bulk email correspondence. My name is Tanya and I'll guide you through the end-to-end -end process of implementing this feature. Hopefully you're watching this video prior to reading and completing your pre-implementation guide. This video will support what you need to know and maybe explain some pieces that you're not sure of. Let us look at the agenda. Firstly, we'll cover what bulk email correspondence is, why you would want to implement this function, provide a software demonstration for the end-to-end -end process from an end user's perspective, a timeline and overview of the steps involved and who you will need to get involved, look at more detail at the database and other design considerations, and finally, end with what your next steps are. So sit back, relax, and open the popcorn and let's get started. So what exactly is bulk email correspondence? It's the ability to distribute invoices and or statements via email to your clients. The email has a body that you can control the outcome put. The invoice and statement are attached as a PDF. The email is distributed directly from the SMTP server and it bypasses Outlook. So you reckon APS Practice Management software passes this SMPT credentials to talk to the server. How that is configured is something that we'll review later in the video. We suggest you discuss this with your IT manager or third party IT support. The system and user product settings known as SUPS and Joe Admin security functions controls who has access to enable the bulk email distribution within your practice. Some of the reasons why you would implement bulk email correspondence include moving to an automated electronic practice and providing that service to your clients, reducing your overall postage costs, and the ability to send the information immediately and easily to multiple recipients. It is time for us now to take a look at what has changed to allow us to implement bulk email correspondence. Let's start by printing off emails from our fee batch. Within our fee batch console, we can see that they have centralised the fees in this process. The fee approval process is in place and we can see the current user is administrator. We can also see that these fee batches have a number of processes and across multiple entities. Highlight all the fees you wish to print from your debtor's work list. We will now preview these. The first change you'll notice on the print preview screen is the Rev X layout format has been enabled. This provides the new screen that we see in front of us. The screen is split into two. The left hand side, you can see what items are in your batch. And on the right hand side will give you a preview of the information. If you're using multiple entities, there is a filter at the top left hand side for you to toggle between entities and select particular ones. The blue items at the top of the screen allow you to push the preview pane off the page so you can have a look at your details on the left hand side. Click here. The email address is picked up from your database attributes that you specify in your configuration. When you print preview the invoices, you have the opportunity to edit the email address before they go out. Anything that you change in this screen is not updated in the database. It's a once-off change. The other items that you can see next to email address is the validation, which will be part of the process when we send off in bulk. The status, the moment they are unprocessed. If they are successful, they will pronounce that successful. The date, whether they've been posted and the transaction type. I've now selected a blue company and I wish to preview the invoice. I'm clicking on the blue button to bring back my invoice preview pane now. Your email body message can be edited from the entity's correspondence page. 
The default installation will implement what you're seeing on the top right hand side where your logo is inserted here. The logo will be dependent on your SMTP setup and configuration. Some system configurations will not allow you to add the logo, so we suggest you talk with your IT manager or partners with IT to see whether you are able to insert a logo. The next invoice when previewed is a separate entity. You can see there is a different layout for the email body message. You can also configure in the entity's correspondence page your subject line for each entity. You'll also note that the DIA is using a salutation, so it's also important to review what fields you're putting in your email body message. We'll cover this section in the configuration items. Within the email body editing tool that's available in the software, we've also allowed you to do a simple unsubscribe. It's important that you also discuss this with your IT manager to make sure that the unsubscribe process is appropriate for your practice. This one allows you to put a mail to and simply the user clicks on unsubscribe and an email will have a subject with unsubscribe to the email address that you set up. There are other alternative unsubscribe options that are available through your SMTP server. So talk about that with your IT as to what's appropriate for your business. We do recommend putting in unsubscribe as it helps with outgoing email and going through internet service providers. We'll discuss this in more detail later. Back on our left hand side, we can also check and uncheck which invoices are to be processed in this batch. You also have the opportunity to change the output type. The output type is determined from the client attributes that sits in the client console and the details page. This is set up in your configuration. In this instance, we've decided to change the attribute from email to print this invoice. We're now ready to process this batch by clicking on the process button. The next prompt shows us we have five items to process. Do we wish to continue? Select yes. The progress bar down the bottom of the screen will show you where you are in your processing of your five items. Expect about a 10 seconds process time per invoice. If for some reason you're outputting through email and your internet stops or the connection to your SMTP fails, you'll be prompted at the point where it fails. It will ask you to continue to the next item on the list. Select yes if that is the case. At the end of the batch you'll be prompted for the printer for the physical print items. The next prompt will ask you if the physical printed items went to the printer successfully. Upon completion of the batch we can see that the status of each of the five items has been successful. We can now close the batch and you'll be prompted with the print preview screen if you wish to print the details of that batch. You've now successfully completed the batch and you've returned back to the feed console. I'm now going to open Outlook so I can show you what your clients would have received in their mailbox. In Outlook, we can see the former email messages that were successfully sent earlier. Upon opening these, we'll be able to see the information that the client received, the detail, who it's from, the subject, and the email body. The PDF can be opened and viewed from the user. All information is as per your normal statement layout, invoice layout. We can also see the unsubscribed option. They can click on that to unsubscribe. That will go through to the email that you've set up for your unsubscribe. So where do you set up the email output options and which email address is the system picking up by default? These are set up in your configuration. There are two new attributes for invoice output type and statement output type. By default, they are set to paper. Your consultant can update these in bulk to email based on whatever criteria. 
You can also change the default for when adding new clients. The other option that you'll need to consider is if you are going to use email, which email address is it that you will need to supply? In this example, we have email on the right hand side. We can also see that the email is a multiple instance. So this means that it will pick up both email addresses when sending any outgoing correspondence. Some firms may choose to create a brand new email address for invoice and statement output. Let's call that finance email. This can be set up and configured with your consultant as a new attribute. We can also provide you scripts to help you populate that if needed. The final option to look at for email is whether you want to consider relationships. This can also be configured. The next demonstration we'll show you is what statements look like. We're going to run you through the end-to-end -end process quite quickly on how statements are run. The process of statements is very similar to your invoices. Open your statements screen from debtors. Complete your normal statement filters and the print preview option will appear. The print preview was similar to what we saw in the invoice section. Review the options that you'd like, selecting process when ready. Remember each item that processes will take around 10 seconds. The invoices will process with all emails first, followed by the print. Once you're successful, say OK, and close out of your statement run. This completes your statement processing. Timeline and steps for implementation. Phase one, planning and preparation. You're currently in this phase. By watching this video, you'll know whether you're going to implement it and why. You also need to complete your pre-implementation guide. This first part of phase one also will be to actually update the database. Ensure that you've selected the register for the upgrade and met the prerequisites. Phase two, RepEx layouts. The new invoice and statement files will be required before you can proceed to implement your bulk correspondence. Turning on the new RepEx layouts will mean you'll see the new print preview options coming up on your screen. You'll need to review your existing layouts to see if there's any further changes required. Your existing as is layouts will be upgraded at free of charge. Any customizations to your layouts will be added and quoted as a separate item. You'll also need to complete communication to your team around the changes in the print preview when turning on the RepX layouts. Phase three, prepare the database. As we saw in the software demonstration, it's important that you review your current database attributes. The two new attributes, invoice output type and statement output type need consideration as to which clients will be upgraded and how you'll do that manually or with consultation with a consultant through using client lists and exporting data and re-uploading that into your database. Other considerations to data include salutations and whether you will use these, mailing name or any other attributes that you would like to display in either the email body or the statement body. The bulk correspondence testing also requires consideration with your IT manager to review the SMTP details. We suggest that that is reviewed and set up prior to going live. You also need to make sure that you've communicated the change in the switch from paper to email with your clients. This is an important step of the communication process. This next section is dedicated to demystifying the technology on the back end and help you get ready to have the right conversations with your IT manager or your third party IT support. In helping you get ready, it's important that we review some of the costs. Firstly, you may need to invest in some further infrastructure. We're going to go through the SMTP setup and the conversations you need with IT. 
The other element that you need to consider is the investment in the quality of your addresses. How ready is your database? The internal process and setup is also another consideration of cost. The risks in terms of outputting your information, the risk is non-delivery or delivery to the wrong recipients. Emails are delivered immediately, which has its pros and cons. The other item to consider is blacklisting, and we'll explain more of that further. So what are the causes of non-delivery of email? The first one could be that there is something wrong with the environment that you're sending the information out. The SMTP credentials are incorrect. Remember, Reckon APS passes those credentials to the SMTP server. So we need to make sure we've got the right credentials from your IT manager and support. Secondly, internet outages. It could be issues with the internet generally with your ISP, internet service provider. So this is what you might be thinking. Sending out outgoing emails should be easy. We have our practice on-premise infrastructure, we connect to the internet and send that information to the clients. What happens in reality is a little bit more difficult. Your practice on-premise infrastructure firstly connects through to an internet service provider. Your internet service provider then connects through to the internet and your recipients and your clients have an internet service provider on the other end. So the traffic goes through a number of areas. This makes some things more difficult. So what do the recipient's ISP services do? Well, they connect to the internet, they create the mailboxes, they have their own SMTP facilities that has spam filtering and a range of other services. So what exactly is spam? It's the use of electronic messaging to send unsolicited bulk email messages, especially advertising indiscriminately. So if we go back to 2012, it was estimated that 7 trillion spam messages were sent. So internet service providers have been forced to add extra capacity to cope with the deluge. So internet service providers have a vested interest to stop spammers and minimise the amount of processing that they have to do. If a spammer sends 100,000 emails to a specific ISP, it would be terribly inefficient to open every single one. The solution is blacklisting. Once an IP address is identified as a source of spam, then that IP address is blocked. This means that no further mail from that IP is processed for a period or permanently. So if you've added something out into the universe and you're blacklisted, that recipient will never receive not only your bulk email processing information, but any communication to that client. So you'll very quickly determine if you've been blacklisted as the client will be receiving no communication. Essentially, there are two types of blacklists, one from the ISP directly and the second one from independent blacklists, which are called real-time blacklists. So let's take a look at an example of an independent blacklist. The first message goes through to the first recipient, OK. Then the second message will go through and the second ISP is going to reject it. They're going to put that onto the blacklist as an independent blacklist. So the IP address that you've sent that from is now on an independent blacklist. This means that any one further information coming out from that ISP is no longer distributed and forwarded on. So no information is sent out. What rules do ISPs filter for? Well, they are all different and it's an art, not a science, unfortunately. The below is by no means an exhaustive list. So we're talking high volume of near identical emails from the same IP in a given time frame. Typically when ISPs are talking high volume, they're talking thousands. In the case of your bulk email and invoices, we may be talking a few hundred. The lack of an unsubscribe option in the body of the email or in the options 
will identify and red flag the ISPs. Formatting the email body, there will be certain keywords, uppercase and special characters. ISPs are always good at reviewing your email bodies to help you guide you in what is a good, good best practice. The high number of invalid email addresses in a batch is also important. So ensuring that you've done your database cleanse is critical. The quality of the address information is also important for when it's reaching the individual recipients. How will you know if you've been blacklisted? In short, it can be difficult. If your ISP is nice, they will notify you. If you have a high invoice resend request rates from clients with the same domain, could be a clue. Somehow you need to correlate your non-payment of invoices or any communication from the client associated with their email address. If you're blacklisted with multiple ISPs, it can be very difficult to know. How to get unblacklisted. If you're blacklisted from an ISP blacklist, the first thing you'll need to do is contact your ISP. You usually then fill out an online whitelist request. It's not something that you can manage without your ISP's help. If you find you're blacklisted from a real-time blacklist, it can be very difficult. There are some toolboxes out there that can help assist and check 115 different blacklists for you at once. In essence though, you should contact your ISP for assistance in this matter. What can you do to minimise the risks? Well, luckily there are third party mail providers that specialise in getting high delivery rates while minimising the risk of blacklisting. In this example, we'll look at how a third party mass email provider works. Firstly, the outgoing message, instead of going directly to the ISP, goes through the third party. It will successfully send out the emails. Once it comes across an ISP that may reject it, the ISP will put it onto their blacklist. Your third party mass email provider will then put that on the whitelist on the ISP and also check the independent blacklist and whitelist it. So this ensures that the outgoing information is sent to Third party providers also help with providing better information about bounced emails. So your mail to account that you're sending out from your sender address, it can help manage that or can provide you with independent reports. It can also provide you other ways of doing, dealing with unsubscribed requests. It can provide guidance on good quality email body formation and it does the reporting on delivery and non-delivery of mail. Management. Reckon APS cannot recommend the third party provider nor the mechanism in which you use your SMTP. You'll need to engage with your IT manager to have this discussion. The considerations you'll need is the type of information that you want back in terms of rejection of emails. If you're looking for a third party provider, we can help provide you a starting point of a list that we are aware of. There are many out there. Prices can be very reasonable, depending on how much you pay will depend on the information that you're going to get back, but they start as low as $50 per 100,000 emails. Outlook versus SMTP. Practice Management 9 currently uses Outlook to send all outgoing email, and this is done on an individual basis. Practice Management 10 provides a basic choice. To do the bulk email will require SMTP in order to send the bulk messages safely and centrally, provide a single centralised audit trail, allow for centralised management of bounced emails, provide for the same email from field for all mail, and provides a means to use a third party mass email provider. If you are sending one invoice on Practice Management 10 and still have it configured for bulk, if you only send one invoice, it will use the Outlook credentials. Outlook versus SMTP, what are the differences? From a user's experience, they will not see the sent items in their mailbox. When sending items in bulk through SMTP, it is all managed through your server. 
You can manage the email body templates with the mail merge fields to enforce practice standards. This is not possible if using Outlook. So let's look at the different configurations for SMTP. Each of the following three configurations are explained further in the pre-implementation guide. It's important to remember that the Reckon APS software, your advanced database, is talking to the SMTP server by way of connecting through some settings. The configuration from the Exchange SMTP server onwards is something that you need to discuss with your IT manager and partners. Each of the configurations provide pros and cons, and we'll look at these now. It's important that you review these to understand the risks and the pros and cons. Summary on bulk emailing. Bulk emailing can have, save significant dollars and increase client satisfaction if done right. Sending bulk emails safely requires thought and care, but there are also risks that need to be managed. The practice can increase deliverability and minimise risks such as blacklisting by using a third party provider to relay emails. Reckon have provided a number of configurations as starting points to assist with the conversation but that means they are no limited to these three configurations. Agenda. Let's review where we've come so far. We've looked at what is bulk email correspondence, why you would implement it, how it works with some software demonstrations. We looked at the timeline and steps for implementation and getting you up to speed on the technology behind it and what conversations you need with your IT partners. We're now going to look at the database and design considerations not previously discussed and finalise what the next steps are. Database considerations. RepEx layouts. Page 27 of the pre-implementation guide discusses the potential changes to your layouts to both invoice and, and statement. You will need to consider if you're moving from paper letterhead to an electronic version and whether you need to have the ability to be able to do both. You can look at payment terms and due dates. Are they things that you would like to adjust and update on your invoice? Is it something that you want to add on your email body templates? Have you considered implementing new payment options? BPay, PayPal, credit card, are these available at the moment? Have you considered consolidating statements? If you're running multiple entities, you can send one statement that shows all the outstanding debt across all entities for the single client. Other payment options could include a finance option. We partner with B Synergy to provide you that service. And finally, but most importantly, we also need to look at the size of the actual invoice and templates for statements. Is the size of the email that's going to go out with the attachment acceptable with your IT team? Is it manageable? Upgrade of your existing invoice and statement layouts are provided at free of charge. You just need to provide and log a support call. If you need to make any changes to your as-is, these need to be discussed with your consultant and a mock-up of the desired 2B invoice and statement needs to be completed. This will then be quoted for you before work is proceeding. We recommend that you upgrade the as-is first prior to do any new changes. And lastly, you can transition to the RepEx layouts firstly before implementing bulk. Database consideration, templates. The invoice email body template and the statement email body template has various available fields which are shown on your screen. If you require further fields that you would like to be able to add to your templates, they can be customised. This should be discussed with your consultant. Entities correspondence. Within the entity console, a new page is available when updating your Joe admin rights. For each entity, you have the options for invoice and statement. You can control the location of your invoice file, which can now be pointed to a network file. You no longer need to install and register this on each workstation. 
The invoice subject line can be controlled using the same variables that we saw in the templates. The sender email address needs consideration. Is this going to be a generic email address? And if so, who has rights to send emails out of that address? Or whether you'll send the email address as an, an actual person. The email body template can be shared and also be put on a network location. So therefore you can use the same body templates across multiple practices, entities, if required. The invoice PDF file name and EML file name can be controlled with your consultant. The default will have the generated on date. You may like your consultant to change the layout. And similarly with the statement, you can control the layout, the email subject, the sender, the body, and also which is to receive the consolidating statement. Show admin security. You will need to determine which users will have access to bulk. You enable bulk at a practice system setting as well as a user setting. Which users have access to the entity's correspondence page and which users will have access to the correspondence administration page. Correspondence administration page. There is two important functions of this page. The one that is shown on your screen there is where you can test your SMTP credentials. You can see on the right hand side that there are server settings that you can test with your IT partners. It's important also to understand what is the foundation of the configuration behind the scenes and have that discussion with your IT partners. In relation to the settings, you can also test your email sender address and to address. Upon entering that information, you can hit the test send message and you'll see a log file. This will help troubleshoot any email, any messages that you might see coming through. Once these details are correct, you would then update this information into your system and product settings. The other important tab on this page is the customizations page. The customization page, you'll see a generate zip option appear. This will ensure that you back up your complete invoice and statement and all corresponding customizations and objects attached to your invoice and statement. This will provide a complete backup of the new RepX files. In future, if you need any customizations or changes to your invoice and statements, you'll be asked to send the zip file to support in your log call. Lastly, there's the system and user product settings. The correspondence page will need to be reviewed. Your consultant will go through all the options. Firstly, you can see in here there is the switch to turn on your RepX layouts. Secondly, you have whether you want to use bulk correspondence for the practice. Then starting at the top, there is BPay settings if you're using BPay. There is a default EML PDF location folder. What this does is it stores every time that you send a request for an invoice to go out through bulk or a statement, every time that it sends that credential to the SMTP server, a copy of that successful request is saved into a network location. This is your audit trail of what you have called from the Reckon APS software. It will not tell you if the emails are successful from Reckon APS. This is managed through your SMTP server. The default invoice output type and default statement output type on PON upgrade is set to print. To change this to two, to set that to email. That will mean all new clients will default to email. The direct print allowed item threshold is set to 50 by default. This means if you have paper statements or paper invoices in a batch that exceed 50, it will ask you to print them to PDF instead of the physical printer. If you still have a number of paper statements, you may need to increase that limit. The email address ID is important in terms of what ID we're picking up for your email. Your consultant can help you enter the correct information here. The consideration you need with the email size warning threshold is something you'll need to discuss with IT. If you decide to use an email relationship, we would need to set that in here. 
Show all entities in the grid allows us to multiply see the entities and select them. The SMTP settings that we saw in our test configuration are entered into the server here. And finally, there is SQL invoice and statement additional fields or additional merge fields. If you require customizations of the invoice and statements to pick up other fields, your development team will provide the SQL code. That is copied and pasted in here so all information now is stored on the database. These are technical considerations and your consultant will help you through these. What's next? We've assumed that you've already ordered your Practice Management 10 software and have met the prerequisites. So now that you've done that, you can install Practice Management version 10.1. You can log a support call to get your as-is invoice and statement in RepX layout on the way. Next, you need to read the pre-implementation guide and complete the questionnaire and send that to the consultant that you've been allocated to assist you in your bulk transition.